Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're doing a five channel amplifier and subwoofer in this 2023 Toyota Tacoma. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to integrate this amp and sub to an existing factory audio sound system. Let's get started. Now one quick thing to note, our Tacoma is not equipped with a JBL factory audio sound system. If you are equipped with JBL and you're going to be replacing that factory amplifier, it's going to be a little bit more intricate as you'll need special harnesses and we can certainly link those in the description and make additional notes here. Let's head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're going to use for this install. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're using for our install, first and foremost, are the amp and sub combo that we've chosen to install today. Uh, the amplifier is a five channel amplifier, meaning it has four channels of power to power your interior speakers, and a fifth channel to power a subwoofer. Now, this is the Kenwood Exelon five channel amp. It's the X802-5. Now our sub combo, we're trying out this SCAR audio box and this accommodates a 10 inch subwoofer. This is a shell mount dual voice coil 4 ohm kicker comp RT. This box goes on the passenger side cargo area behind the rear seats and it actually just drops into the cargo box. To wire it up to the factory audio sound system, uh, we need an amplifier wiring kit and we're going with this SCAR audio 4 gauge oxygen free copper OFC kit comes with power ground um, fuse fuse holder RCA's speaker wire remote terminal wire everything that basically you'll need for the install for the factory integration piece there is a couple of different options in order for us to pull audio from the factory radio you either need a lineout converter which basically converts the stereo's high level speaker output to a low level speaker input that we can feed our RCA inputs for amplifier for signal or if your amplifier is equipped with it there's a high level input meaning it can take a speaker level input as it has a lineout converter built into the amplifier already now this harness is a high level input harness and we can feed our four channels of input from the factory radio right into the amp without means of a four channel or five channel lineout converter. Super convenient. Like mentioned before, if your amp doesn't have a high level compatibility like we do, you're gonna need some sort of lineout converter and there's really nice ones, there's medium ones, there's budget friendly ones. We can link all different variations of lineout converters in the description for you. Now finally here, the actual tap into the factory audio sound system, depending on your year Tacoma in this generation, from 2016 through 2019, they use the traditional style Metra 1761 style harness. From 2020 and newer in this generation, they've converted over to a an 8-pin audio harness. That's a little bit different and uh, we can link both versions in the description depending on their year. Now, according to this year or 2020 and newer, there's two versions of the harness. There's this one that's only specifically speaker wire, but PAC also makes a full breakout harness which includes your power and grounds too. So if you want the premium harness to have more connections, you can do that. We're using our basic harness here today. This is about 15 bucks on Amazon. Lastly here is we have some speaker wire. This is called nine conductor cable where essentially it has all our speaker wire double shielded in the bundle, comes in about 20 feet. And this is gonna carry the signal to and from our radio between our amplifier and radio. And it's a nice bundle cable that that'll make the install nice and clean. Without further ado, what we're gonna do is start measuring out, mapping out where amplifier is gonna go. For this size of amp, it actually fits really well underneath the driver's side front seat. We're gonna build an amp rack for it and start planning our wire out from our battery to that amplifier location. Okay, so we've been working on our amplifier here. Now, we 
got some uh, ABS plastic here. It's a 12 by 12 sheet, and we can link one of these in the description. It's about an eighth, eighth inch. But you can trim it with some uh, tin snips to make it really the size that you want for your amplifier, and it makes for a nice board to mount everything to. Now, what we've started doing is we got our ground here. It's nice and short. We only needed about a foot. And this type of amplifier requires speed terminals. So we put some speed terminals on with some Provo BC shrink. It'll go right in there. We need to tighten that down. Same thing, we got our power wire here, and we'll pull this all the way to the battery area up underneath the hood. It's just easier to make those connections here at the bench. That takes care of power and ground. There's a factory ground location there underneath the seat. We'll show you where that is here in just a moment. Um, for our other connections, remember, we're not going to use our RC inputs because this amplifier has a high level input, or it's a built in line out converter already. So we don't need a separate device. And so we can feed our speaker level signal right into the input of this amplifier through this signal input. Now we have this harness that's included with our Kenwood. And what we did is we need to extend that all the way up to our radio. Now that nine conductor cable that we had at the beginning, we took uh, of that 20 feet, we took about, uh, I would say about eight feet of it. And we soldered on and made those connections. The nine conductor cable inside this harness here it's actually all the same colors that's included with your high level input harness it's all the same so we matched color for color here we solder those together and we have all this heat shrink that will move up and over those connections this is going to be your input harness we need to run this all the way up to our factory radio we still need to strip this end back but this end will go to the speaker output of our factory radio so we can feed that into this amplifier so this guy can amplify that signal and then we'll talk about our output now the rest of our nine conductor cable about eight more feet of it we cut the length and this is the output of the amp so after it does all the output powering it's going to come off these terminals here and these first uh, four sets of terminals are outputs for our interior speakers. Whites is going to be front left, grays are front right, greens are rear left, and purples are rear right. Um, each set has its, a black wire which indicates the negative. We put some speed terminals on those as well. And those will be the output from our amplifier going into another set of nine conductor cable. Now, at the portion where it connects to the radio, we'll get to that in just a moment, but we're gonna utilize this T harness. We'll show you how we're gonna cut and modify this to make those connections work. So we're getting really close. We're gonna move our heat shrink up over those connections here. We'll go over all those uh, directions, inputs, and outputs in just a moment once our amplifier is all said and done. Last thing here is we have one set of speaker terminals we're not using quite yet. This is our subwoofer output. We're just going to use the included speaker wire of our wiring kit. And we're going to run a, uh, a set of speaker wire all the way to the cargo area where it's going to connect into our SCAR audio box with our kicker sub. All right, so we got everything basically uh, for the most part, all wired at the amplifier here with our inputs and outputs. And then we need to talk about our T harness for the factory integration non JBL. Now we have our inputs and outputs. And we, as you can see here, we wrote input and we wrote output. Output is the output of the amplifier. Our input is from the factory radio, it's the input signal. So our amplifier knows what to amplify. We also added our sub connection. This will go to the subwoofer box that's going to fit in that cargo pocket back behind the rear seats. So those are our connections here all the way across. Now, like I mentioned before, these are about eight feet, our input and our output harnesses. As we go to the other end here, in this part, we're gonna show you how to create your T harness. Now with our T harness here, it's uh, basically ready to go. What we need to do is cut it in half. So we'll go ahead and grab our flesh cuts here, just like so. So we have uh, our two harnesses here. Now on the back of our factory radio, you're gonna have a harness that looks just like this plug. When we unplug this harness from the back of the radio, our harness here will plug into that port on the back of the radio. This is gonna be our signal side, and what we'll need to connect this to is the input side of our nine conductor cable. So we're gonna grab this end, we're gonna strip these wires back here, we're gonna solder this plug in, this will carry from the radio through this cable into the input side of our amplifier. Now, once that amp 
provides that new power output. This is where we're going to solder this plug on and the original harness we disconnected behind the radio will go into our plug. That harness is our speaker harness and it's going to send that signal to all our door and dash speakers for us. So just like how we soldered uh, a little bit here, we're going to solder these ends on to our inputs and outputs. And basically that completes getting everything prepared here at the bench. So we soldered on our plugs for our plug and play harnesses here. On the output side is the female end because that'll carry the signal to all our speakers. Also on the output, output side, we're using the blue wires, our remote turn on, and it connects to the amplifiers remote turn on. Both sides have that, but we don't need to remote turn on, so we're just using the output side. But basically, got those all heat shrunk. We're going to wrap it some high temperature test tape like we did this side and put some heat shrink on the terminate the end there and then this we're going to go to a remote source back behind the radio and then this is the input side this end plugs into the back of the radio this will feed our amplifier everything it needs now like i said this is the red wolf t harness you can do the pack one if you need power ground um, constant 12 volt accessory everything else in the harness we don't need any of that and we're just going to t-tap for accessory uh, back behind the radio so this is uh just fine for our install here today so super cool this becomes plug and play at this moment we can head and take all our amplifier and everything to the car to start getting everything installed All right, so we got our amplifier in just temporarily here before we tack it down, um, but it'll fit there great. Ran all the cables through our little opening, just like so. And up underneath, you can see where everything kind of passes through the carpet. Now our signal cables, our inputs and outputs, we ran this way along the factory heater channel up underneath the carpet and we fished it out right here. And uh, this will go up to the radio, plug into the radio's inputs and outputs. Um, Subwire comes out here, it'll head backwards towards our sub box. Power wire goes this way through the channels, and now we gotta pull it through the firewall um, and do a fuse and fuse holder up underneath the hood by the battery. Last thing here, if we pull up our carpet, we have a factory ground, which is perfect. So what we're gonna do is actually remove that 10 millimeter bolt. We've already removed the negative off the battery, so we're safe to remove this. And uh, we're gonna use a wire brush, clean that up a little bit and put our ground at that location. All right, there's a nice clean ground here. There's also another throated, threaded stud. Um, it's really up to you where we want it. We're just gonna go right to that factory ground. Um, but if you need it, you can clean up this second set of threads right there and uh, do a, its own dedicated ground. Totally up to you. So let's go ahead and now add our ground first, then the factory ground, and we'll tighten it up with that 10 millimeter bolt. All right, we got our ground all in. At this point in time, we can put the carpet back down. Up underneath the hood here, our battery is on the driver's side. Our positive terminal here is where we're gonna be making our connection to power our amplifier. Now, as you take this off, you're gonna have both the tightening stud, but more importantly, we're gonna have our main stud here. We're gonna go right here with our amplifier. And we want our fuse and full fuse holder as close to the battery as possible. As we run our wire, our factory grommet is right back in here. And uh, add some nice soft rubber there on the inside. We're going to pierce through with our metal hanger that we notoriously use on the channel. And uh, use that to fish our wire through the factory boot there. Um, so we can power amplifier from the battery location. All right, so we grabbed our hanger. We just poked right through that rubber. It's so thin and easy to pass through. So we have our little fish here. We're gonna go on the inside. Comes out right there. And what we've done is we've now connected our power wire to our hanger, taped it up, and we've lubed it up with a lot of soap and water. 
that's gonna allow it to easily pass through that grommet when we pull it from the engine bay side. Again, do yourself a favor, load that up with some soap and water, we want that super slippery as you pass it through the wrapper. All right, so with our wire pulled through the firewall, we split loomed it. We actually installed our fuse holder and made a little mount to use that uh, uh, 10 millimeter bolt there with leftover ABS plastic from our amp mount. And then with our negative off the battery, went ahead and hooked up our power wire there. So that is all done. We can get that all tightened up here. All right, so we're sitting here in the truck and we have our um, two sets of harness cables, our input and the output, as well as a remote turn on the wire that we need to connect to our factory radio. It's pretty easy to pop out this radio. I usually start on this end, kind of give it some pressure with your fingers. Just work it on down. Don't really need a panel tool because you got plenty of leverage. Carefully set that off to the side. From there, it's gonna expose the two 10 millimeters on each side, four in total. Go ahead and remove those. Now, looking on the back of your head unit, you're gonna have one plug that looks just like the same plug amplifier T-harness that we've built. That's our speaker wire harness, and there's only speaker wires in this harness for the non-JBL platforms. There is one other connection we need to make for remote turn on wire. We're gonna get you in a little bit closer. We need to feed our wire into the dash and make those connections. All right, so we fished our input output harness. Down below, there's plenty of light. We can kind of see where we just fished them up into the dash here. So we have our connections. Now our input side will go to the port that we disconnected our factory harness from. And our output side will connect to the factory harness because this harness is our connection to all our speakers in the vehicle, all four channels. Now additionally here, there's one wire on this gray harness. That's accessory that we'll tap into using our T-tap and that'll send power to the amplifier so it knows when to turn on as the factory radio does. All right, so we plugged in our harness. Signal harness goes in there. Output harness goes there. Uh, remote turn on wire that goes to the remote input of our amplifier. Now on this secondary harness, this gray guy, there is a few gray wires, but the one we're after is the one right there in the center. It's the smallest one, and right underneath the blue wire. That's gonna be our accessory wire. And we're gonna use a T-tap here and essentially just snag that signal that's gonna trigger our new amp to turn on. Just like that. So, with that being done, we can plug this back in, get the negative back on the battery, and start testing and tuning our equipment. Now the sub output wire from the amplifier, we ran down, same thing with the front, pulled off the key panel, ran our speaker wire, just fished it up underneath, ran that sub wire, just tucked it up underneath the panel. We popped a little hole in the cover here so we can hook up our subwoofer speaker wire to the box of the sub itself. Now that fits in nice and clean and tight. The amplifier all hooked up, all connections now made at the radio, power and ground. We went ahead and put the negative back on the battery. So now at this point in time, we can test and tune our amplifier. gain set with an SMD DD1 with everything now connected to the radio and the uh, amplifier and the sub. This thing sounds awesome. Um, the vent can still vent out from underneath. The nice thing is the uh, dials are on this side of the amplifier so if we need to do any down the road adjustments we just roll the seat all the way forward. Um, if you have any questions on what we did here go ahead and post a comment below. 
Um, like mentioned before, we also did other things on this truck, front speakers and rear speakers. If you want to see those specific videos, we'll link those in the description along with all the parts that we used in today's install. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you liked what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe to post great content on the channel all the time. We will see you in the next video.